Welcome to this Q&A session for the Beyond a Joke short film program, which is part of the 31st edition of Nordisk Panorama Film Festival. The films are not only nominated for the best Nordic short film, but they also have a chance to win the Audience Award, so please don't forget to vote online after this session. My name is Sam Groves, and I have the pleasure of talking with uh, Jonathan Etzler, whose film is Swimmer, uh, Antti Holmer, whose film is Kill Annanly, and Morgan Gilles-Petit, whose film is Grab Them. So welcome, guys. Um, I know this isn't uh, exactly how we would do it normally. And Auntie, this is your first time on Zoom, so good luck with it. Hope it goes well. Um, I, I'm going to start with Jonathan, um, your film Swimmer, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, it's, a, it's a most unusual story, um, but inspired by real events. Can you tell us a bit more about these real life events and whereabouts you discovered this story? Well, I was, um, I, I read like a small news item in a newspaper and it was just like a, a few short lines. And it was about that two policemen were trying to arrest a man in a swimming pool and he refused to get up. So they spent like 45 minutes trying to convince him to get up. And then finally he did. And I read this like 10, 15 years ago or so. And uh, it sort of stuck in my mind. That, 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 that was such an interesting scene. I mean, I, I thought this could be like the ending of some sort of Breaking Bad story or something. But, but then I, uh, after a while, I thought this scene could be just one short film. Um, and yeah, and then I made it. And did you ever discover what the, <clears throat> what the actual person did? uh what what he did i mean he <clears throat> he i think he just climbed up of the pool when he was uh but as in why the police wanted to to get him out of the pool no no it, it was just that they were trying to arrest him and uh and uh, i don't know really what it was about so so i mean it's very loosely based on reality it's not, okay it's not a documentary or some sort of uh, reconstruction really yeah um, and, and the film obviously has real kind of humor in it. Um, but uh, I mean, your, your film has, it's, a, it's also a story about a man evading police after he's done a hit and run. Yeah. Um, cool. So it, I guess it could have been quite a different story uh, with a slightly darker tone. Was it always your intention to kind of focus on the humor? Uh Yes, I think so. And, and but 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 it was also always my intention to 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 not just make it into some silly story and and, and have this sort of uh, uh, this sort of um, uh, contrast with with uh, the moments when he's underwater and it's more sort of poetic and and flowing. Um, uh, so 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 I always sort of wanted it to also. I really wanted the audience to sort of sympathize with this guy and, and just why he really enjoys being there in the water and why he doesn't want this moment to end, you know, and sort of make that sort of beautiful in a way. And I think like we definitely sympathize with him and that's, I, get, I think that's partly to do with the casting of the, the guy who plays the part as well. Can you, can you tell us a bit about him and, and why you chose him? Because I thought, I thought he was a, he was kind of a really, really good, um, good choice for that role, but I wasn't sure if your intention, he, I mean, he has a real distinct look about him and I wasn't sure if your intention at the beginning was to maybe suggest that he'd committed some other kind of crime. Um, but can you tell us a bit about him and how you chose him? Yeah. Um, so I, I actually, I pitched this film here at Nordisk Panorama. Uh, and then we got financing from uh, Film i West, uh, from the West part of Sweden. And uh, so we started casting people there. And I really wanted to work with uh, amateurs, which is something that I haven't really done before in this extent. And uh, this guy, uh, for some reason, the, the, the caster uh, knew him, um, 
because he had been to some casting a long time ago. So, and he's he's constructs um, crossword puzzles. So he's a crossword puzzle constructor from uh, Varberg, uh, a small town in Sweden. And uh, uh, but he he has done some like small amateur theater things. And but he's um, he was just so uh, odd and special, I think. And he had this sort of this sort of um, innocence. Uh, yeah. So, but and my. Um, so I guess that's that's why I cast him. Really, I mean, odd and special are, are pretty good words to use, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and also he like you you warm to him and you're kind of rooting for him at the end when he kind of yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Um, this is the second year in a row that I've had the pleasure of doing a Q&A with you, with, with your short films. Um, so you're obviously quite prolific with making them. Um, what are you working on at the moment? Do you work on numerous projects at the same time? What, what's in the pipeline? Uh, I'm working on my first feature film. So I'm writing uh, the script right now. Um, and uh, I've got some some funding for the development and uh, also working uh, a bit on like developing a series also so so i'm i'm, I'm sort of uh, for a while at least for the moment i think i'm uh, i'm transitioning towards making uh, longer projects in the like a longer format uh, so yeah that's what i'm doing i'm i'm doing my first um, feature project okay longer feature length yeah well we, we look fun. we look forward to hearing more about that um thank you so much for, for joining us today thank you okay auntie i'm going to move on to you um and your film kill anna lee um, I actually watched a, a, sh a very short interview with you uh, last night where you you talk about spending some time in London and you say that British and Finnish people have a similar sense of humour, uh, which obviously resonated with me as a Brit. Um, I mean, I thought this film was very funny. And I remember when I first watched it in my kind of spreadsheet, uh, I, I, wrote, I can't remember what I wrote exactly, but it was something like in capital letters, yes, exclamation mark, Finnish humour, exclamation mark. Um, so for me, it felt like particularly Finnish. Um, but I wondered if you had any particular uh, British comedy influences which uh, had an impact on this film, or if not British, where do your comedy, comedy influences come from? Well, my background when it comes to comedy is in... Um uh, is in television, sketch comedy, and uh, and theater. And I think you, usually, when you want to insult a filmmaker, you say that you know you, your your comedy was like theater or TV sketch comedy because they're the most notorious uh, genres of of comedy. I think. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't help it. I, I wanted to try with this short film. I wanted to kind of um, move towards a direction where um, I could m kind of make a statement with what I think is funny. And I, I think like um, unreasonable things are funny. But if everything is all the time unreasonable, like in farce, for example, um, uh you know, it, it's not funny. It, it doesn't, the, the contrast doesn't um, come out. So um, I think that's something, that there is something similar to, to, to British humor in that sense, that you take something very mundane and then, you know, develop it into like operatic, <laughs> uh, on, on an operatic scale. And um, for example, Smack the Pony had some some uh, sketches that floored me because they started out as there is a, there is one sketch with a 
with with a with a surprise party, and it ends up uh, the the person who's being celebrated like insulting everybody. And I find that something so true in 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 like everyday world where you actually you know your emotions take over. And I think that's that's funny. That's fun funny to me when you take it far enough. But um, like I said, I I I really wanted to to have the the kind of the mundane background and i do think that school is a brilliant brilliant there is nothing more uh uh kind of gray uh gray background than than a than a school where you know everything is uh very monday to friday so to say yeah and, and just on on school i mean the famous saying is never work with children, never work with animals. How is your, I mean, not that the, the, the kids have a, have a, like there's no leading roles or anything, but how was it working with them? Well, I mean, uh, this was my first ever um, uh, work as a director. My background is in acting. And like I said, in theater, I've done a lot of TV where I've been kind of directing as well, but, but this was my first kind of attempt to try something with cinema. So, um, so I was like, the first day we got like 50 children, uh, professional actors, amateurs, a rapper on stage, you know, like, uh, and I, I, I don't know how, I mean, I got myself into that situation, but it felt really, um, it felt really great to go to the deep end because I mean, uh, what I think I want to do next is, is continue with the short form because it allows you to really try stupid stuff and make mistakes as well i think more than the when 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 it comes to feature films and i i definitely enjoyed the the short form i didn't know it was your first um your first directing uh you behind the camera but it was amazing in in that sense um the 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 interplay between the two leading characters is is terrific. They they work so well together. Were they uh, just people who you knew you wanted originally, or I mean, how did you come to cast them? Well, uh, Laura Biren, who's an amazing actor, um, uh, is fortunately a friend. <laughs> so so I kind of lured her into this, and then. I kind of wanted to build everything around her because she's a, I don't know if I should say this, but she's always been very worried about not being very funny. And I always think that I think she's hilarious in everything, you know, if, you know, like if given the, the circumstances, she can be hilarious. La, uh, Laura is, is playing Kaisa in this, this one. And I, so I kind of wanted to, to play around that idea. And then from that, um, we got to Pirko Hämäläinen, who was who was just who just got it, and when we put them together, it was it was really. But they are great. I mean, I was so fortunate to work with, uh, uh, like Jonathan said that uh, he wanted to work with amateurs, and I really wanted to work with professionals <laughs> because I, I really wanted to feel safe in that way because and and they were amazingly professional. Uh, because they could respond to everything. But I mean, I, I love, I, uh, uh, I, I've got a thing with feuds uh, and I, I hope this is not like misogynistic or anything, but f with female feuds, especially. So uh, this kind of thing where, where you are in a school and then you have to kind of hide your emotions, but then there's so much going on behind. It's, I think it was something I really enjoyed working with, with these actresses, especially because they, they just could turn it into to um, uh, to very um, very very specific glances to each, each other. I never could have written. Yeah, I mean they they do that they do that stuff so well. Um, actually, what you mentioned about feuds and and female feuds is quite interesting. With my last couple of questions, because I, I wondered you wrote the film as well as directed it. Uh, and I wondered if there'd been any kind of family rivalries in your case that had perhaps inspired the film. Um, but if not that, wh where did the where did this film come from? I've worked in a school uh, as a, okay. I, I guess it's like a teacher's assistant uh, position when I was 18. So I wrote a lot of a lot of myself to the character of Yorna, uh, <laughs> this kind of a little bit lost of 
lost boy in between the 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 tough ladies and i i certainly you know i certainly um you know uh, knew that character but also the 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 kind of the emotional level in a school is very familiar to me and my mother is a teacher as well but i i didn't that that was something i didn't want to go to <laughs> this is not about a, a, like a psychological d dive into a mother and son relationship but but uh but yeah but i i kind of um i know the world and then um I guess it was just something about overachievers that got it because it was a short story in the first place. So I, I started out with a short story a few years ago and, and I kind of, you know, I found this, found the best way to portray it with these, with a, with a, with two women and the other one a little bit younger than the other one. And, and finally, what, what did your mum make to it? I think she hasn't. I think she hasn't seen it. She hasn't seen it. No, because we uh, because of the the situation that's going on, we haven't really had a showing yet because okay. I haven't been able to go to Finland and yeah, so I probably shouldn't. She's usually very. She's usually very. Um, uh, polite and supportive. <laughs> he comes to <laughs> <his case. laughs> Well, yeah, hopefully she is. Um, I really love the film. So, Thank so you. thanks so much. Thanks. <laughs> Morgan, I'll come to you. I, I understand you're in the countryside and the connection may be a little ropey, but we'll see how we go. Um, I, I'm really like, uh, whenever I see something which feels really fresh, or original to me, that's when I get really excited. Um, and I watch, grab them, um, and had that kind of feeling. Uh, what, what was the trigger for the film's concept? Um, you, you know, did you see someone who, a woman who looked like Donald Trump one day, or, you know, where did this film come from? Um, uh, I've always been interested in my work. Uh on uh, fake news and uh, when deep fake started to uh, be on the news a lot uh, I, I started to think of the challenge of having a character with a very famous face and you change the perspective that the viewer has on this character to, to make him love this character where it's a hated person or make him hate this character where it's a very loved person and uh, I also thought of um, the way uh, women are judged in society for their bodies and uh, the way white men can sometimes try to take the, the power over women's bodies. And I think Trump is like, it, takes, it checks all the, all the things. The, all the themes of the film, the fake news and how it treats women. Um, so it's different things that made me come to grab them. Okay. Um, and and you've talk, you just mentioned about the deep fake kind of technical issues with the film. Uh, I mean, technically, visually, it's, it's amazing. Um, but it must have been quite a challenge to to get his face to say these words and have these expressions. Uh, and it, I, I'm assuming it was quite expensive. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we, we got good partners that made it less expensive, uh, fortunately, because yeah, you need very powerful computers. Um, yeah, so that can go high, especially as those kind of videos were mostly made for internet and we wanted to make something that would be good in cinemas and so it's a quality level that uh, we had never seen before personally um so it was very complicated that way and so the system with the defect is that you make uh, the computer learn how the face of the actress works and how the face of Donald Trump works. So it's never like we take pictures of Donald Trump and put them on the film. It's more the computer will learn how the face of Donald Trump worked based on a lot of data and then made it work for our actress. Okay. And, and it's Evelina, isn't it? The, the woman who plays Sally? 
Yes. Yeah. She, and how was the process for her acting in this film where she knew that no one was going to see her actual face? Mm, I mean, technically, uh, she was quite limited in the way she could move, like, like she could not make uh, her hand uh, cross her face so much because it would make the computer not understand that it's a face when she's like that and therefore may make it not work or things like that. So it was more that she was very limited in her way to, to play, I guess, or to move. Um, but inside of that, we really worked on her being Sally because that was the goal that Indian people see Sally, even though from the first frame, they had the laugh of seeing Trump on the screen. Okay, nice. Um, I, I read you'd worked with um, Roy Anderson. Oh, yeah. Is that, is that right? Um, how was that experience? And did any of that experience with him um, make its way into the film at all? I guess in an unconscious way. <laughs> um, I don't know, I always loved his work, so I, I guess it's mostly that. Uh, being on the set with him made me learn how he does. And, but I don't, I don't know if it's really a method that uh, I used to uh, ungrab them. Um, because, I mean, he, he works in a way that he searches a lot of paintings and uh, a lot of reference pictures to them get him to his work. And uh, I mean, the way that I can see that uh, I got closer to his work and grab them than any other film is that for the first time I was on, the, on the, in the studio uh, uh, for a lot of scenes like, like, uh, like him. Uh, and that was such a nice experience, uh, so such a comfort. Uh, uh, and uh, that made me want to do more things like he does. Uh, well, yeah, he's not a bad person to have as an inspiration, I guess. Um, and I understand you, you've been working on a feature film. Oh, well, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, right now, I am uh, shooting on my first feature film. Uh, it's Excess Will Save Us, uh, the feature film, I guess we can say, because I made uh, uh, Excess Will Save Us the short film previously. And now we're making a long version of it. We are in the end of the shooting right now. And we're going to start the editing soon. Um, and, and you're directing? Yes. And um, I've written it too. Uh, okay. the, the, the short film was a total documentary, but this one is more, is more hybrid, really. Uh, something that is neither a documentary nor totally a fiction. Something that is hard, really hard to define. I mean, but I mean, I guess like there's elements of grab them. I mean, obviously there's no documentary, but it's it's like a mock documentary. So you are you are kind of merging some genres with that. Yes, I, I've always been interested by that, and um, in, in grab them, I really got tricked. Like in in the shooting, I started to feel like I was doing a documentary really on Sally. I felt so much for her. I wanted to defend her so much. Uh, and, and, the, and the process felt more and more documentary. Like, oh, Sally, she likes that. So I, I like she likes the 50s. She likes Marilyn. So I could play with this in the film because that's how she is and I want to. You know, so mm. it, I really got tricked myself in believing in her, and the actress was so good for it too to make uh, to make me believe in her as Sally. Amazingly, well, I think that's why the film is so good. I mean, the fact that you invested so much in her. Uh, I mean, I never thought I could see someone with Donald Trump's face and really uh, be endeared towards them and actually <laughs> like them so much. So, yeah, that was an experience. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly, as I did your film, Jonathan and Auntie. Um, we've, yeah, we've probably gone over time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap things up here. Um, but just to say a big thank you 
to you all. Um, and thank you to the audience for watching. Uh, there's loads of other interesting films to enjoy with the festival this year. Uh, please do spread the word. Um, and don't forget to vote for the audience award. Thanks again, guys. And hopefully thank I'll you. see you in real life uh, in the future at some point.